And hey folks, I've been praying hard for the city of New York so they don't go boom. Because a lot of people forget the Russians still have pretty good submarines. Unlike the Chinese, they have a three-burster. It's a fast, really fast, small submarine. Carries, uh, what you might call it, a ballistic missile. Could be off in the Atlantic. Hard to trace because it's a smaller package. It only has three missiles. It's not big and also has better shielding so the crews don't get fried with the sodium nuclear um, reactors. These are fast, efficient, and they have nuclear armed torpedoes. They're a lot better than the 1960s and 50s ones. They're really fast and really small. So basically, they'll sit outside the Atlantic away from people and regular traffic. And they'll set targets. They only have three missiles. And then they'll self-defense because it's go, go in, hit the three targets, get the hell out. And it could be a MIRV. It could be an air burst. It could be a ground pounder. You know. But it's only three ballistic missiles. Why? Because it's a lot faster than the... Everybody's seen the big nuclear subs with a lot of missile things. Its primary mission is to destroy certain things on the East Coast. It makes sense. All right? You get in there, go out, come back in. All right? These subs could be hidden in an oil tanker. It could be hidden in a cargo ship. A lot of people, oh, you can't do that. They learned a lesson from Howard Hughes, Global Explorer. These things can do it. All right, so you have two or three of these things. The Navy has good sonar, but they have they'll pick it up after a while if they concentrate enough of their hunter subs to concentrate. But you need about five or six of the hunter subs to pinpoint this pig. All right, because they also had decoy transmitter torpedoes. Once you launch it, it emits a sound. Just like a noisy Chinese sub. Okay, same speed and everything. But this uh, video is not about that. Somebody asked me that question in my emails. And I keep telling them, that's why I'm praying for New York City. Ugh, I'm tired. Tranquilizers. I have to take them because I'm getting too excited. Okay. Uh, from the Civil War until War One, all canned liquids like canned milk, canned beer, whatever, canned juice, you only had one way to open these things. That's with a heavy ice pick or a bayonet. Yeah, a lot of people didn't get too good or like, I like to order three beers. Or it was in a bottle. All right. A lot of armies don't use bottles, all right? So they went with the can, like canned milk in the Civil War. But they all had long bayonets, and they poked the hell out of these things, okay? Until the 1920s. We still had a lot of things that need a bottle opener, something like this. But those were bent out of wire. Somebody in the 20s invented it. And it was called the church key because it kind of looked like a church key. It had a big wire loop like that. And you put it over and you pop things, you know, soda pop bottles, beer bottles, anything with a cap. And usually it would be dangling from a watch chain or something. So you get that nice cool soda pop or beer on a hot afternoon. Well, during the Roaring Twenties, several inventors made this type, okay, on a box. And... It sold well, it popped open bottles. Okay. Now, big thing is with these cans, don't want to open that one up. Before these came by, the pull tabs, original just peel off the tab, that was aluminum and that came during the 60s. Until 1962, all can beer cans were steel. Okay, if you had Coke can, it was steel. All right? 7-Up, steel. Everything was steel. And then they switched to aluminum. 
easier to use, disposable, not a problem. And you can recycle it faster than steel cans. Costs money. Okay? By 1928, this was invented. Alright? Because it looked like a little steeple with a little window. Little door and ring the bell. A little steeple. Okay? That's why it was called church key. Now, now we days we have this. But in the old days, it'll be used like this. Move that over there. Maybe I can't do it on this one. Okay, like that. You make one big hole, like that, with your church key. And you make another little hole at the other end. And then you pour out here or drink beer, whatever. If you watch World War II movies, Korean War, all the way from uh, 1933 to until 19... I think 59 and further on because they didn't get this patented until about 65. It was still steel can. So everybody would have one of these around their dog chain or dog tags or something like that. All right. And you drank your beer. World War II. And this one's an old one too because. Let's see what date this was. And that's after edge, that's can opener. And this is by the Elko Company. These are popular and last a long time. These were chrome plated steel bottle openers. And a lot of people use them for pry bars, a whole bunch of other things. If you didn't have a can opener, you go around the rim and a pop it. If you want to open a bottle, it opens the bottle. If you want to break into a car, it does pretty good at that, too. So anyway, that's explained the church key. What's church key? Okay. Real simple. It was designed for this type of can, solid steel. Because in the old days, that's how you open one of these up. So it's a lot safer. A lot of people went, I'll open it. Ah. Didn't work too good. Worse with the bayonets. So I hope that answers Bujay's question. And a lot of people, this was a commonplace thing until 1965. When we got starting getting aluminum cans. So I hope this helps out a lot of younger people. Um... Baby, not baby boomers. Who is the idiots after them? Generation X, Generation Y, Zoomers, Boomettes, anybody who had never drank beer out of a steel can knows what I'm talking about. And I'll catch you later. You have a nice weekend. I hope this is the right weekend because I've been praying a lot for New York. So I'll catch you later. I'll be seeing you. Got it. I don't know why, but all sorts of times I, I'm changing colors. I'll catch you later, folks.